and it's just beautiful and it just lifts up the Word of God. Now, there are several words used in this psalm for God's Word. You see uh, the law, or that's the uh, translation of the word Torah. Some people in interpret that, that to represent the first five books of the Bible, which is also referred to as the Pentateuch. It uses the word uh, testimonies. The word testimonies actually refers to the Ten Commandments. These commandments were a testimony because they were a witness to the Israelites of their faithfulness or unfaithfulness to their covenant. Uh, it uses words like precepts, words like statutes, which refer to uh, something marked as a boundary. Uh, it, it uses, uh, uh, of course, the Word of God. And it's, it's just, uh, but for us, we just look on all these words, for us is the Word of God. And we need to understand that this entire Bible is the Word of God. Amen. And it's all beneficial to us. Now, talking about the law, we know that no one's ever been able to get saved by keeping the law. But the law is beneficial for us to study. For one thing, in all the Old Testament, we see shadows and types of Jesus throughout the law and throughout the prophets and throughout the Psalms and, and you know, the whole Bible. So... Uh, it, it helps build our faith. All of this Bible does. Uh, Romans 10, 17 says, So then faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. And when, we, uh, when Paul was referring to the Word of God, he was referring to this entire Bible. Paul used the Old Testament. As you look through his letters, he used the Old Testament in ministering to uh, New Testament believers. And Jesus, Jesus quoted from the Old Testament. So we need to read the entire Bible. I share this because I've run into some people that say, well, I'm a Christian, so I only read the New Testament. Well, we're missing a lot if we only read the New Testament. I've led people to the Lord because of the knowledge of the Old Testament. I was on a plane. Uh, we took off out of... Uh, uh, in, uh, in, no, we took off out of Malaysia. And there was a young man from Indonesia sitting next to me on the plane. And uh, he was of a, a, an Asian, but he had been raised uh, as a, a Buddhist. And I pulled out my Bible and began to read the Bible. And he said, uh, tell me, he said, I've been raised as a Buddhist. And he said, We've been, I've been taught all my life that everything is relative. And he said, I've gotten so confused, to be honest with you, I don't know what's right and what's wrong anymore. And he said, does that book that you're reading tell you what's right and what's wrong? I said, not only does it tell you what is right and what is wrong, if you'll accept the author of this book, Jesus Christ, as your personal Lord and Savior, Savior, he'll give you the Holy Spirit who will help you to understand this book. And he said, I believe that's what I've been looking for. And I began to go through the Bible, and I, uh, I showed him how it all fit together. We were on that airplane together for hours. I, we went from there all the way to California together <laughs> with a short layover, you know, just a few hours in Tokyo. So I had, I don't know, probably 12 or more hours with him. And I would show him uh, scriptures like the 22nd Psalm. We're just sitting there all these hours. And I showed him uh, how... Uh, that described the crucifixion very accurately, though it was written over 800 years, actually about 900 years before Jesus was crucified. And it was written before uh, crucifixion even existed as a form of execution. And I showed him verses like the verses in I, Isaiah, how he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our trans. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. And I, then I showed him how Peter repeated part of that, looking back to the cross, saying, by his stripes we were healed. And uh, so I just began to show him this. I, I, I read verses about the Passover lamb, and I told him, you know, how John the Baptist showed him scriptures, how John the Baptist said, behold, uh, the, the, the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. And I said, see, Jesus was fulfilling what the uh, law was pointing to, what the scriptures were pointing to. They were all pointing to Jesus. And he came along and fulfilled the law. Amen. Well, the Bible says that love fulfills the law. And the Bible says when 
when we love our neighbor, uh, we have, uh, lo when one loves his neighbor, he has fulfilled the law. And so when we walk in love, we're not going to find ourselves breaking the, uh, these testimonies that were written by the hand of God on stone tablets. Uh, when we're walking in love, we're not going to be, uh, uh, if we love our wife, we're not going to be committing adultery. We're not going to be stealing from people, lying and uh, doing all that type of thing. If we love God, which the first four commandments have to do with our relationship with God, we're not going to be worshiping idols and doing things like that and having other gods before us. We're going to love Him. Jesus was asked, what is the greatest commandment? And He said, hear, O, hear, o Israel, the first of all the commandments. Uh, he said, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. And, the, and uh, the first of all the commandments is, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first commandment. And the second, like it is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. He said, there is no other commandment greater than these. We also find the word commandment used in this long psalm, Psalm 119. Well, Jesus said, a new, a new commandment I give to you, that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this, all will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. And so he made it real simple for us. He gave us this royal law of love and if we walk in this agape love, this unconditional love, we're, going to, we're not going to have a problem with what we read in the Old Testament because we've been empowered by the Holy Spirit. Amen. And the power of His love to be able to walk a life that's pleasing to God. That doesn't mean that any of us are perfect. Every person here, if they're honest, has made mistakes since they've been saved. But thank God the throne room of His grace is always open and the blood of Jesus is always there to cleanse us from all sin. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Well, we said uh, last, uh, last week we read verses like, uh, how can a young man cleanse his way? That's verse 9. By taking heed according to your word. Amen. And then uh, verse 11. Your word I have hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. It's just when, when you put the Word of God into your heart and store it up, it'll be there for you when you need it and help give you direction. It gives the Holy Spirit a, a textbook to work with. In uh, verse 24, and we closed with this last week, your testimonies also are my delight and my counselors. Well, you know, Jesus said that, and, and uh, or, or John wrote that, uh, the Holy Spirit would be uh, our teacher and that we're all taught by the Holy Spirit. And so if you were in a classroom, if this were a classroom, you would expect to have a textbook in most classrooms. You'd have a textbook. Well, God has given us a textbook. This is our textbook in the classroom of the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit is our teacher, but He wants us to have this Bible so that he can bring it alive and teach it to us and cause it to become a part of our very person. Jesus said in John chapter 6 verse 63 the words that I speak are spirit and they are life. And the, the uh, destination of the words on the pages of this book are the heart, the inner man of, man and, and, of men and women. He wants us to let these words come alive and live in us. The words in the Bible are different than the words in any other book in the world. These words are alive. And as we read and digest the Word of God, it becomes a part of us. Jesus, when He was tempted by Satan, when He was in the wilderness, He said, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. So He said, Your testimonies are also are my delight and my counselor. Verse 25, my soul clings to the dust. Revive me according to your word. If we want revival, we need to have a return to a reverence and a respect for the word of God here in our nation, in our country. I believe that one thing we're lacking in the church as a whole in America today than anything else is a, a respect and a reverence for the word of God as the absolute truth. We need that if we're going to have revival. The, the Word of God is what strengthens us individually and corporately as a church. 
Most of us, a lot of us, I, I do, I admit it, I take vitamins, I take uh, supplements, I, you know, I want to be healthy. I, I always say do what you can in the natural while you're believing God for the supernatural. And so uh, I try to stay healthy. I, but you know what? The best vitamins we can take are these spiritual vitamins, the, the Word of God. You know, this will keep us healthy, spirit, soul, and body. Amen. So we, he says, my soul clings to the dust. Revive me according to your word. And then verse 26, I have declared my ways and you answered me. Teach me your statutes. Again, we have the Holy Spirit. We ought to read the word of God every day. Now, uh, I'm not going to share with you how much time I spend in the word of God because being in ministry full time, I have more time to spend in the word of God than uh, most of you do. Uh, because uh, most of you are working, uh, you know, jobs someplace. And, and so I understand that. So I don't try to lay on someone uh, something that, you know, that, that won't work for them. But I'll just say this. It's good to start every day with the Word of God and read it again sometime during the day if you can and spend quality time every day in, in God's Word and have a plan where you can read through the entire Word of God. And I believe it's good for every believer to set a goal to read through the Bible uh, once a year. You know, most people have time to do that and also have time where you just camp out on scriptures every now and then. Just spend time. Sometimes I'll, I've spent a week on one verse, just on that one verse over and over. Well, I do other reading too, but I'll, I'll spend a lot of time meditating on one verse because I know God's giving me uh, revelation knowledge. He's given me rhema word from that one verse. You know, I, I, I can't uh, I tell you how many times I've sat there. Uh, I like to have a cup of coffee with Jesus in the morning. And I have my coffee and I have my Bible and I'm praying and I'm reading the word. And I sit there and I'm, I've got situations like all of us do in life. And God will just, the Holy Spirit will breathe on a scripture and just make it come alive in a way I've never seen it, and a way that will apply to my particular situation that I'm facing. He does it time and time again. This is one of the main ways that God communicates with His children. I hear people say often, they'll say, well, I wish I had a word from God. Does anybody got a word from God for me? Well, you know, we respect the gift of prophecy, and we don't despise prophecy. That's a, a, a very uh, uh, precious gift, and it's for exhortation, edification, and comfort according to 1 Corinthians chapter 14. But the truth is, you don't have to wait around uh, for someone to give you a prophetic word. We have the written word of God in the Bible that we know we have 100% certainty this is the truth. This is God's word. And we can have a word from God anytime we want to by just sitting down with this book and opening it up because it is God's word. And he has a way of just breathing on it, bringing it alive to us. This, if it weren't for this word, I don't know where my life would be right now. But I thank God for the word of God. Verse 27, he says, Make me understand the way of your precepts. So shall I meditate on your wonderful works. We need to spend time thinking about the wonderful works of God. Too often we find ourselves dwelling on the past, mistakes, we may have made years ago maybe things that go back to when we were uh, in, even in grammar school, you know, or high school or whatever, and trying to relive our lives from way back then. I'm telling you, we've got a great future ahead of us. We need to, what we need to do is remember those wonderful works of God that He's done in our lives and then think, you know, Lord, I believe the greatest works that you have in my life are ahead of me rather than behind me. Amen. We need to press on toward the, the prize for the, the goal for the prize of the, uh, for the mark of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Amen? And before that, Paul said, forgetting those things which are behind. Pressing on, pressing forward. It's time for the church to press forward. Amen. Glory to God. We need an outpouring of the Holy Spirit in the 21st century. We talk about Azusa Street, another outpour, the Great Awakening. We need a Great Awakening in the United States in the 21st century. But we're not going to have it without a return to a reverence and respect for the Word of God. Amen. Uh, one, 
verse in the Old Testament says, My people perish for a lack of knowledge. We need the knowledge of the Word of God if we're to be successful in our Christian walk. Verse 28, My soul melts from heaviness. Strengthen me according to your Word. The Word of God strengthens us. We can draw strength from God's Word. Verse 29, Remove me from the way of lying and grant me your law graciously. You know, Satan is a liar, Jesus said, and he's the father of lies. But Jesus said, he said, the thief uh, does not come except to steal, kill, and destroy. But I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. And so, you know, we need to all understand that God is for us. And we're part of the army of God. If we've accepted Jesus Christ as our personal Lord and Savior, we're His children, we're on the winning side, and if God be for you, who can be against you? But you know, if we want to be good soldiers in the army of God, we need to pay attention to what the captain of the host is telling us. And he's given us an instruction manual to go by. Amen? Glory to God. In any kind of military training, you, 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 know, you, you have a lot of uh, teaching, a lot of training, a lot of calisthenics, a lot of uh, things to do in order to be a good soldier. Well, God has given, us a, he's given us the sword of the Spirit, the Word of God. as the, That's the offensive weapon that we have in the arsenal that God has given us. He's given us other things like the, you know, the breastplate of righteousness. We need to understand that uh, Jesus Christ is our righteousness and we're right with God only through Him. We start getting into self-righteousness, you know, thinking, well, I'm doing so good that, uh, you know, I've just worked my way here. Oh, that's dangerous. You know, we're right with God only because of the merits of Jesus Christ and not our own merits. And if we start thinking, well, I've, it's on my own righteousness, then that breastplate of righteousness begins to get out of place and expose the heart. So we need to just keep it all in place, and that's what the Word of God does. It helps us to keep all of our uh, armor in place. We keep that belt of truth around the waist, and we keep our feet shod in the preparation for the gospel of peace. Hallelujah. We, uh, we uh, remember verses like James uh, 3, 17 that says, But the wisdom that is from above is first uh, pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. You know, it just it gives us peace in life as we realize, hey, we're equipped. We're on the winning side. Amen. Glory to God. Remove from, the, from me the way of lying. That would be anything that disagrees with the Word of God. Hallelujah. We have that helmet of salvation on as well. Anything that tell, anytime a demon tries to come to you and say you're not saved, if you know you've accepted Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior and you've been born again, you're saved. You know, the enemy tries to work on your mind. But we need to remember we have the helmet of salvation. Amen. He says, I have chosen the way of truth. Your judgments I have laid before me. Jesus said, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. We need a steady diet of the word of God, which is the truth. If we want to remain free, stay free, we need to eat freedom every day. And we do that by reading and meditating on God's word. Verse 31, I cling to your testimonies, O Lord. Do not put me to shame. I will run the course of your commandments, for you shall enlarge my heart. You know, as we surrender to the Word of God, the, the problem that some people have is like I had. The first two years, I started searching for the, uh, to find out about the God of the Bible, and I was on my second, third reading of the Old Testament and fourth reading of the New Testament when I uh, finally made that surrender to Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior and decided to accept the Bible as the truth. But you know, up until that point, I was reading the Bible, and, but I was reasoning with it. I was questioning it. I was wondering, well, is this true what the Bible says about Jesus? You know, did he really create everything? You know, and I was going through all that in my mind, reading it, but reasoning with it. And while that certainly it was good I was reading it, I really didn't get anywhere until I just made the decision that it, it was amazing how it began to fit together 
And I began to realize, I thought on my career as a businessman, how you can't get, you can't get six or seven businessmen in a room together at the same time to agree on something. But Tommy, he gave me a little report sometime back about how the Bible was written. But how many, 60, 66, by 60 something men. And over thousands of years, yet it all is in agreement and fits together. He, that's from a human standpoint, folks, that's impossible. You can't do that in one room with six men at the same time, much less that many over thousands of years. Only God could orchestrate this. And anyway, so I finally decided to just accept the Word of God as the truth. I believe every word in here. And I went on to accept Jesus as my personal Lord and Savior. That's when I began to experience the power of God. I was delivered from drug addiction and alcoholism, set free, born again. He changed my heart, made a new person out of me. I became a new creation. Glory to God. I began to see people through the eyes of Jesus. I was standing there so, just so glad to be saved, knowing I was saved. And I said, oh God, you, this is so wonderful. What can I do for you? And his first instructions to me were, just go and love people with the same love I've shown you. And that's what I've been trying to do. These will be 29 years next month. But I give him all the glory. But you see, the Word of God, I, I haven't reasoned with the Word of God from that point. From the point I accepted it as the truth. I believe it. I believe it. It's the absolute truth. And when you believe it, then you begin to make progress. Amen. That's when God begins to enlarge your heart to receive more from Him. Amen. He pours out His love more and more in your heart when you just believe Him. I will run the course of your commandments for you shall enlarge my heart. The racehorse secretariat, probably the greatest racehorse in history, it won the Triple Crown and still holds some uh, records at racetracks today. After Secretariat died, they uh, did, you know, did an oper looked into Secretariat's body, did an autopsy, you might say, on the horse. And they found that Secretariat's horse, a uh, heart, that is, was about twice as large as a normal horse's heart. That horse had heart, <laughs> you know, amen. That, that, that horse knew how to win races. It was not to be defeated. And so when we run the course of his commandments and are determined to believe God's word, he will enlarge our heart so that we can finish the race and accomplish those things that he wants to, uh, us to accomplish with our lives. Verse 33 Teach me, O Lord, the way of your statutes, and I shall keep it to the end. You know, too often people give up on something. They might say, well, you know, I believe I'm going to start giving the first part of my income uh, to the Lord. I'm, I'm going to uh, become a tither, and they start off doing that, and then all of a sudden something doesn't go well in their finances, and they say, oh, well, it just, uh, I tried it, and it didn't work, you know. <laughs> and, but no, it says... Teach me, O Lord, the way of your statutes. I shall keep it to the end. If we'll obey God's word in our walk with God, we'll be able at the end of our life to look back and say, you know, it was true. Yes, I went through some valleys on the way. I had some tests, but it was true. Every word in that book is the truth. Amen. I can look back over the last 29 years of my life as a believer and I can say that. It's the truth. Every word in there is the truth. I've seen him perform his word in my life. Verse 34, Give me understanding and I shall keep your law. Indeed, I shall observe it with my whole heart. Make me walk in the path of your commandments, for I delight in it. Incline my ear to your testimonies and not to covetousness. Turn away from my eyes from looking at worthless things and revive me in your way. You say, well, what are, what are worth, worthless things? I always like to go, go and see what Jesus says about wor what, what's worthless. You know, one thing Jesus said is worthless is worry and fear. So, you know, anything you look at that causes you to worry and puts fear on you is a worthless thing. Jesus said worry is nonproductive. 
He said it can't add one inch to your statue. You, it, it won't cause hair to grow on your head. <laughs> it, 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 worrying just is non-productive. So, and he, matter of fact, he said, do not worry. So when we look on things that brings worry to us, that's a worthless thing. Well, I got good news for you. Jesus said, just don't look at that. Don't pay attention to that. Pay attention to his word. Amen. His word will build your faith up and it'll get you victory. Praise God. Verse 38, establish your word to your servant who is devoted to fearing you. Now that word, that word there, fearing God, that means that awesome reverence and respect for God. That's what he's referring to there. He says, uh, turn away my, my reproach which I dread for your judgments are good. Behold, I long for your precepts. Revive me in your righteousness. And there's a reminder, you know, they were looking ahead to the Messiah. And we look back to the works of Jesus on the cross. But revive me in your righteousness. If we want to have revival, it has to be uh, looking to Jesus as uh, the source of our righteousness. And knowing that when we accept Him as personal Lord and Savior, we become as right with God as we'll ever be. Right there, when you accept Jesus and born again, you can't be any more right with God than when you're, you're born again and saved and, but through accepting Jesus. But you know, we can grow in holiness. And holiness means being set apart for God. And so we can grow in our Christian walk. Uh, it starts with the new birth, but it, it's a process of transformation where every day of our lives we ought to be, want to be transformed more into the image of Jesus than we were the day before. I, I, I want to be able to say today that I'm more, I, I have more of the image of Christ in my life than I did yesterday. And I want to be able to say that tomorrow I'm going to be more like Jesus than I am today. We ought to want to continually grow in the Lord and never stop growing, wanting to be more and more like Jesus. Amen. That's your mercies. And we need to avoid self-righteousness. And always remember, it's through the merits of Jesus that we're saved, through His works. Verse 41, Let your mercies come also to me, O Lord, your salvation according to your word. So shall I have an answer for him who reproaches me, for I trust in your word. And you know, when people come to you and find out you're a Christian or if you're sharing uh, about Jesus and they don't like what you have to say or come against you with religious arguments or this type of thing, you know, you can say, oh, you know, well, I've got a, the, an answer. I may not have every answer for you, but I know this. I once was lost and now I'm found. I once had this in my life and that in my life, but I surrendered to Jesus and he changed me. And he's so real to me. And I talk to him every day. And he talks to me through this word every day. This word is alive. He is alive. And he's living in me. Amen. And it's hard for people to argue with that. It's like the uh, man that received his sight, you know, when they pulled him in before the religious council and were cross-examining him and interrogating him and asking him all kinds of religious questions and so forth. And uh, he said, I don't know about all that. I'm paraphrasing. He said, I don't know about all that. But he said, one thing I know, I once was blind and now I see. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Amen. It's hard for people to argue with a changed life. A changed life is the greatest testimony because they can see the Word of God on display in your life by the changes that He's worked in you. And if they see you walking in that unconditional love of Jesus and walking in forgiveness rather than wrath and, and uh, bitterness and anger, when they see you going through tests and instead of coming out burned, you come out better. Instead of coming out bitter, you you come out refined. When they see that happen, you, you still got a smile on your face and you're, you show the, the, the lo a love to the very ones that caused you trouble. As they see that, they realize he's got something, she's got something that I don't have but that I need in my life. And that something is someone and his name is Jesus. Let's bow our heads for prayer. Father, we just thank you for the word of God that does not return void. And Lord, thank you for giving us a hunger in our souls, in our hearts, in our spirits for your word. Thank you, Lord, for uh, renewing our minds with your word. 
in Jesus' name. And I just want to ask everyone here with uh, all eyes closed, please, heads bowed in an attitude of prayer and with a reverence for God. And I'd like to ask the Internet audience to show the same reverence for God and just bow your heads for a few moments. And I'd like to ask everyone to look into your hearts. And I just ask the Holy Spirit to help you search your hearts. And I want, to, I want you to ask yourself this question. If I were to die, you know, God forbid that anyone should die tonight, but uh, the truth is no one's over a heartbeat or a breath away from eternity. And ask yourself this question. If I were to die tonight, if I were to die in the next 60 seconds, am I sure I would go to heaven? And if you're saying within yourself, you know, to be honest with myself and with God, uh, I'm not really sure that I'm right with God. I'm not ready to meet God. I'm not sure I've really accepted Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior with the faith and, and, and conviction and sincerity of heart. If that's the condition you're in, you're saying, you know, I want to get this resolved in eternity. I want to accept Jesus as my personal Lord and Savior. I want to become a new creation. I want a new beginning. I want a new life in Christ Jesus. If that's you, lift your hand up high and then you can put it back down wherever you are, whether you're in this church or whether you're watching over the Internet. Just lift your, if you're watching over the Internet, God sees your hand when you lift it up. And then you can just put it right back down, but just lift it up as a show of faith that you're, you're ready to accept Jesus. You want to accept Jesus now as your personal Lord and Savior. Let's all stand to our feet and let's say this prayer together. We know we have, um, actually we have more people on an average watching our services by... Uh, internet than we do in the church <laughs> and so we know we have a, a a large internet audience and there could be someone watching by internet on the other side of the world or just down the street uh, here in Humble that are accepting Jesus as their personal Lord and Savior so let's all say this prayer together even if you've been saved for many years to encourage that person that may be saying it uh, for the very first time we encourage the internet audience to say this with us Let's say this together. Heavenly Father, have mercy on me, a sinner. I repent for all my sins and ask your forgiveness. I open my heart up to your Son, Jesus Christ, and I invite Him to be my personal Lord and Savior. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for saving me. I know now I'm born again. I'm a new creation. I'm saved. I'm going to heaven. I'm forgiven. I have a new beginning tonight. It's in your name. I pray and declare this in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Let's give Jesus a hand clap. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. You may be seated. And Teresa, if we could have some, uh, maybe a couple of prayer partners up to help us. Uh, Pray for those that need prayer. And we want to remind the internet audience that if you said that prayer, please click on that uh, prayer and praise report button and let us know you accepted Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. We just want to give glory to Him with you and thank God for your new life in Christ. Also, we have six free books for all viewers that would like them. If you click on the uh, free books button, We'll send you six books absolutely free of charge. You'll receive instructions how, on how to get those. For those that are here in the church tonight, we have those books free on the table on the right as you go out, uh, free for you to pick up. If you need prayer for anything, maybe you've been fighting sickness in your body and you need healing. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He still heals the sick. Maybe you're fighting discouragement. You know... We're here tonight to encourage you. But sometimes you just need someone to just pray with you on a personal basis and uh, just hold your hand and, and pray for that discouragement to go and to cast that uh, uh, torment out and that despair out and to ask God to release to you His joy and uh, uh, His love. Amen? And so these prayer partners are here for that. Maybe you're here tonight and you're broken hearted. The same anointing that was on Jesus when he said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has anointed me to heal the broken hearted is here tonight. Amen. We are the body of Christ on the earth today. Jesus is here with us. 
And the Holy Spirit is here to touch the brokenhearted and heal them. Hallelujah. Maybe there's something else in your life that we haven't mentioned that you need prayer about. Maybe in the area of finances. Maybe in a, a, a marriage or, or, or some a relationship in your life that you need prayer about. Uh, maybe there's uh, someone that uh, you need to forgive and you just want to... Sometimes it helps to have someone to pray with you and talk to about these, these types of things. So come on up and uh, let them pray for you. And we'll all believe God together. If you uh, aren't coming up to the front, just stretch out your hands toward those that are up here. Your faith is important. And so let's put our faith together and believe that every need here is being answered according to the Word of God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Pablo, I'm going to step down here and help them pray, but if you turn my mic down, and then when I come back up, you can turn it back on. We'll stay with the Internet audience. Praise the Lord. We'd like to uh, uh, encourage the internet audience, if you have any uh, prayer requests, please send them to us. There's a prayer request button there on your screen if you click on it. And we pray over these requests uh, every week and take them very seriously. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. You know, while they're praying, I just want to ask if, if you uh, feel led to make a fresh commitment to the Word of God as the truth and a commitment to spend quality time in God's Word every day, and you want to renew a commitment to the Word of God, I want you to stand to your feet, all that would like to do that. Because really, that's what this... This 119th Psalm is all about. It's, it's just time over and over again showing us how important the Word of God is in the believer's life. And you know, I was thinking about what Jesus said, and he said, the words that I speak are spirit and they are truth. The Holy Spirit travels on the Word of God. I mean, he, he finds entrance into our hearts. As the Spirit and truth, these living words become a part of us. It's, it's wonderful. And so uh, we're making a commitment to spend quality time in God's Word. Amen. Well, we'll find our faith growing. Romans 10, 17. So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. I asked the Holy Spirit one time, why is that second hearing in there? And uh, the Holy Spirit gave this answer to me. He said the second, he said faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. He said the first time you hear it, it's going into your inner man. Second time you hear it, it ought to be coming out over your mouth <laughs> as you speak the Word of God over your life situations. So hold your Bibles if you have your Bibles with you and let's just make a commitment. Amen. 
those watching by internet, we invite you to do the same thing. And just, uh, you know, put your hand on the Bible. Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. And uh, say this with me. Heavenly Father, I make a fresh commitment to your word as the truth, as the foundation of my life. As I read it, as I study it, as I meditate on it, I will grow in faith, in hope, in love. In the name of Jesus, amen. amen. Praise God. Well, thank you so much for coming out tonight. And uh, Sandra, it's good to see you uh, uh, back with us tonight. God bless you. Thank you. So I'm so glad y'all are, are with us. And, uh, I've seen, this is your husband. I, 